Hi guys, it's Satchel Mano. How's everyone doing? Good, good, good. I hope I am so busy at the moment. I'm having to wake up three hours before my normal time to do videos for you. What the hell? Anyway, today I'm reviewing Habanita by Molinard. This one came out of nowhere. I smelled it probably eight years ago, very briefly. Remembered a little bit about it and then kind of semi-blind bought it because I the reviews are so great and it's something that I just knew that I would like. So here I am today reviewing it for you. So this fragrance came out in the 1920s, first of all, which is so surprising to me. Prior to this, I think Shalimar was the oldest perfume I'd reviewed. That was 1928. But this one originally came out in 1920s. I think it was 1920, actually. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it came around about the time of the flappers, all of that stuff. And it was a time when smoking was frowned upon Women smoking was frowned upon, I should say. Men were great, they were happy as Larry. They were allowed to smoke their cigars. But it was the time when cigarettes came about and um, cigarette holders and it's just burst onto the scene as being this cool thing to do. And this fragrance was actually originally made not to be a perfume. It was meant to scent cigarettes. Apparently back then they had these oil things with little wands and they would scent their cigarettes with them with things like clove. I think clove cigarettes might still be a thing now. Not in this country, but I've heard of them before. But anyway, yeah, and then it got, it then became a perfume. Um, and I feel the same way about this one as I do when I smelled Nimala by Molinard. I feel like it was just way ahead of its time. I can't imagine women wearing this in the 20s because it's kind of dark and brooding and just super cool. Anyway, I digress. So it got reformulated in the 80s, and then it was reformulated again, and now we have this newer one. So this is Habanita, uh, means Little Havana, which in my head is probably referencing something to do with smoking, because Havana, cigars, that's, that's where I go when I hear Little Havana, something about cigars and smoking. Uh, and the bottle is so cool. The old one used to be taller with a gold lid, I think, but it's got like a Greek tapestry on the front of it it's it looks like Grecian women I'm not sure what that reference is but Habanita let me tell you what it smells like ah so before I tell you one quick quick point about this this formulation apparently they haven't taken away any ingredients they have kept the same 600 ingredients from the original but they've just put them in different proportions so they've kept the essence and the spirit of what Habanita is but it probably just behaves differently now. I can't comment because I haven't smelled the original. But this one is pretty damn great. So the top notes are Mastic, Petergrain and Geranium. The heart notes are Ylang Ylang, Heliotrope, Vetiver, Jasmine, Centifolia Rose, which is the rose that comes from the south of France. Some people call it Cabbage Rose. The French call it Centifolia Rose because Cabbage Rose is not very nice, is it? They'd rather say it's the rose of a hundred petals. And then you have Nutmeg and Cedar. The base notes are musk, amber, patchouli, oak moss, vanilla, and Fragrantica says mice or sandalwood. I'm pretty sure nowadays mice or sandalwood isn't in here, but there's a sandalwood note in here. So how does it smell? Gosh, this thing, I, I feel like where has it been all my life? That's how I feel about this when I smell it. So when I first smell this, this is a whoosh of so many things. The beginning part of it is the most exciting. It smells like so many more things than what they list. And I'll tell you the main things that I smell. So first and foremostly, this is a powdery fragrance. The powder is the thing that stays with you the whole time that you wear it. I call it baby powder for grown-ups because although it's powdery, it's dark. There are smoky tones to this fragrance. To me, it smells like there's honey in here, even though it's not listed. So it's smoked, honey, powdery, and it feels like there are so many resins in here as well. And the resin part of it, which is just mastic, I guess. Mastic is also known as lontisque. It's a woody resin, but this, there's obviously amber in here too, but it feels like there are much darker resins at work. So you have this amazing powderiness and then a smoked honey thing with really heavy resins and it's amazing. There's also a ton of rose in here. So that's the main floral note I smell. I don't really smell ylang ylang in here. The geranium and rose are 
giving it a super rosy feeling and heliotrope is also powdery as well so there's a couple of things contributing to this powderiness amber as well and it's just wow it's it's kind of playful but also really gothic at the same time i like the juxtaposition of this fluffy powderiness and then just heavy brooding something else and when i think of women mainly wearing this in the 20s i i reckon if you wore this you were a badass this is like femme fatale sort of perfume it's cool it also does feel like there's something cigarette-y about it and i don't mean dirty smelly ashtray but it feels smoky like cigarettes as well in a in a good way it's the way that you kind of would want a cigarette to smell <laughs> like pretty cigarettes if that makes any sense so getting into the dry down this fragrance kind of does a 180 on you it's kind of surprising what happens in the dry down is like i said the powder remains the powder stays there the whole time but what reveals then is the vintage side of it there is something in here that's got that almost I feel like it's animalic a little bit. There's like a something something skanky going on. But the main thing that happens is vetiver. There is this huge amount of vetiver that comes out of nowhere. Vetiver is in the heart notes of this fragrance. But I would say it's pretty much the, the whole base. Because this sharp, grassy, kind of almost masculine vetiver just starts to overtake the powder almost in at certain points when it's drying and it's so different from the beginning i don't feel the rosiness it goes kind of even darker i would say it goes much woodier and it feels like a different fragrance so i do find myself applying it fresh quite a lot because i just love that wonderful honeyed smoky opening but if you like vetiver but powdery vetiver, which I've never smelled before, then you might like this. I think it's definitely worth smelling just because of its history and the way it stood the test of time and just mainly the way it smells. It's pretty damn cool. It takes about half an hour to 45 minutes for this vetiver thing to happen. Um, but when it does happen, it's really cool. And talking about projection and longevity, this one is really monstrous at first it's one of those ones where you feel like oh gosh i've put too much of it on but i found that the more i put on the longer i can make that opening last that could be a dangerous game so be careful there you might want to you know be careful on the trigger and not suffocate anyone but vetiver is a very long lasting note as well and i get i would say it's kind of medium this one looking at it being black and dark with all of these resins and crazy notes in there it's not a super long lasting thing that I thought it would be, I, get, I bet it was in the past. But now it's about six, probably six to eight hours on me. And at the end, I'm left with just the lightest brush of powder on quite a strong vetiver note. So that's all I'm gonna say about it because the opening's complex and I don't wanna go on about it, but I wanted to tell you more about the transition because it's quite a significant one. Anyway. If you guys want to get this fragrance, head on over to natino.co.uk. They sell it there. I will post a direct link below. I'm Alex from Mono, trying to make the world smell better one video at a time. I've got to get to work, so I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.